Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today's lesson is on the pronunciation of a vowel sound, uh, and what it sounds like is or. And this is a, a British English vowel sound. Uh, if you're listening to American speakers or Canadian speakers, um, the words will be a little bit different. Um, and also, depending on whether there is an R in the spelling, uh, Americans and Canadians do pronounce those words differently from the ones that don't have an R because they make the R sound in their pronunciation. But in the UK, in Britain, uh, we don't uh, make the R sound so much, even if it's in the spelling. So, we have a lot of words here which all have different spellings, um, but they are all pronounced in British English with one vowel sound, which is or, or. So, it's like the word or, um, and you can see I'm pushing my mouth forward when I'm saying it, or, or, and it's just a round shape. I'm not making any R sound with it. It's just or, or. So um, a lot of people get uh, distracted, really, by the spellings um, and try to say the word according to the way that it's spelt, when in fact sometimes that produces the wrong sound. So a word like this, for example, um, well, with G-H-T, of course, um, that makes it even more difficult, but that's just caught, caught. You don't have to try to make A-U coat, coat. Some people try to say coat, but it's not, it's caught, okay? Just like that spelling of caught. It's just the same, no different. So that's the case for all of these words. Even if they have double L in them, it's or like that. If, even if they have a W at the end, it's still or. So let's go through the words. And also there may be some words you're not familiar with and I will explain the meaning as we go along. So let's have a look. So all, all, you probably know this word. Um, everything, all. Um, this one, awful, awful. So there's a W there, but we don't say w, a w, a w, w, like that. It's just or, it's an open circular shape, awful awful. So people use the word awful if something is bad, if they're eating something and they're not liking the taste. They say, oh, this sandwich, oh, it's awful, awful. So um, that's awful. And awkward is similar. Um, if you feel awkward, you don't feel comfortable. You, you feel a bit shy or unhappy um, if you feel awkward. At a party, for example, if you don't know anybody and nobody's talking to you, you, you sort of feel awkward. Okay? Right, so next line. Ball, so ball, I'm sure you know that word at sports, football ball and bald. So this bald is when someone has no hair, they are bald. Okay. And a bore, this bore is when someone isn't very interesting. You're talking to them, maybe you're at that party and then you do find somebody to talk to, but the person you're talking to is really a bore, what they're talking about isn't very interesting. 
and you're doing your best to look interested, but it's very difficult. Um, a bore, okay? And born, when a baby is born on a certain date, then that's their, their birthday. When were you born, usually, someone will ask, what year were you born, okay? So that's that one. So I hope you notice by now I'm making the same shape with my mouth for every word. So, next line. Call, to call someone. Call, call shout out to them. Call, or just simply the name of somebody. What do you call them? You call them by their name, okay? Um, core, C-O-R-E, core is the, the middle of something. Like if you have an apple uh, and you eat the apple, but there's a bit left in the middle, that's the core, that's the inside part, the core. And then court, court is either the where the king and queen are, the royal court, or it can be um, in sport, a tennis court, or in, in legal terms, it can be where a legal process is, uh, it takes place in the law court. So this word law and court go together and they have the same vowel sound, okay? And court, the past tense of catch, if you catch a ball that someone throws to you, I have caught the ball. So caught the same, okay? So if you've heard American pronunciations, probably by now you will have heard different uh, a different way of saying these words, but it's your choice uh, whether you want to pronounce uh, in British English or American English. Um, it, it depends where you are, really. Perhaps if you're in America, you will want to speak with an American accent. If you're in the UK, you probably want to speak with a, a British accent. So, and also you can change depending on where you are, if you want to. If you hear people talking and then you, you say the same words that they're saying, uh, you probably will copy the way they are pronouncing it, which is fine, okay? So, let's continue. So, door, open the door, close the door, and dawn, the dawn, is when the sun rises in the morning, <laughs> morning, dawn, okay, um, when it first gets light in the morning as the sun rises. Then fall, to fall is to uh, drop on, onto the floor, to fall, and for, F-O-R, I'm sure you know, what is that for? Uh, she she made she baked a cake for my birthday something like that four is the number and it sounds exactly the same as this one four four she baked a cake for four people you could have that for four people and floor that what we stand on is the floor and a floor with a W, but no sound of a W, floor. Floor and floor sound exactly the same. A floor is uh, something that's wrong with something, um, something that's not perfect. It's an imperfection, uh, something that's uh, not 100% perfect has a floor in it, okay? Okay, continuing. Uh, gall. Gall is something um, that tastes bitter. It has a bitter taste, gall. And it can also be used in a metaphorical way. If you're annoyed by something, 
um, it, it galls you. It, it sort of gives you a bitter feeling is the idea, okay? Uh, gore is another word for blood, but it's not used in normal everyday life. Um, it's used in more um, talking about horror films, that sort of thing. Uh, there was a lot of gore in that horror film, that kind of thing. And gory, if something is gory, it has blood on it. And gored, the past participle, if someone is gored, um, often it's a bull that does the goring. Bullfighting in Spain, for example, um, someone was gored by the bull means the bull charged with its horns and uh, injured the person and they were bleeding. Okay. So, hall, a part of a building, the hall, or a building itself can be a hall. Horse that you ride, horse. Haughty, so horse, haughty, the spelling is different, but the vowel sound is the same. If someone is haughty, uh, they're a bit um, rather distant and they, they seem to look down at you. They're sort of like this. They're, they think they're superior, so they behave in a haughty way. Okay. Um, and then jaw is this part of your face, the, the part that moves when, when we speak is the jaw, like that. So jaw, or, or, okay. Law. Um, I, I once had a student who I think was either American or she'd spent some time in America. And uh, she told me that she was studying a subject and she called it la, la, um, which sounded like, to me, sounded like la. <laughs> um, and I said, oh, I, I've not heard of that. What is that? Um, and so then she spelt it for me, L-A-W. Oh, law, you're studying law. But uh, she pronounced it la. So um, maybe I'm exaggerating the difference, but that's one of that's an example of how the American and the British pronunciations are different, and sometimes even a British person won't understand what an American person is saying because they pronounce the vowels differently. So there we are. So law and lawyer. The lawyer is the person who is the professional person who works in the law. And lawn is in, in a garden. You have a nice piece of grass, green grass growing, which you can sit on in the summer. And that's the lawn. It's the grass in your garden. Uh, and people keep it nice and tidy and cut cut the grass so that it doesn't grow too high and it's a nice lawn. Okay, more, to have more of something. Mortal is the opposite of immortal. We are all, human beings are all mortal, meaning we, we don't live forever, we're mortal. Uh, so this word is often used um, in maybe in mythology, like Greek and Roman mythology. You have the gods and the goddesses who are immortal and the human beings whose lives they often play with, who are the mortals who, who die. The gods and goddesses don't die. Okay, so mortal and mourning the morning. Okay. Then we have naughty. Naughty is it, often you say to a child, stop being naughty. If a child is misbehaving, doing um, naughty things, 
maybe um, running around, breaking things, making a mess, um, kicking people, anything like that. You'd say, don't do that, it's naughty, naughty, stop it. So that's that word, naughty, okay, uh, bad behavior. North, north, south, east, west, north, normal, um, normal. I'm sure you know that word, normal, if, if something is just ordinary, normal. And then this place, Norfolk, is a place in the UK, an area of the UK called Norfolk. Right. Then we have or, the word itself. Or, which is when you're rowing a boat, you, you use an or or two ors. Uh, paw is the, the little the hand or the foot of an animal, a paw, like a cat or a dog has a paw or any other animal like that. Um, this paw is uh, in the skin. The skin has pores, little holes. Okay. Pause to stop for a short time, to pause or have a pause. So some people try to pronounce this pose, pose, but that's not right. It's pause. Okay. Port is a drink like wine, only stronger. Port. And pour, you pour from the bottle. So pour the port from the bottle, okay? Quorum is uh, when you're having a meeting. Sometimes you have to have a certain number of people to be able to make decisions officially. So uh, it's called a quorum. Do we have a quorum? If you have to have a minimum of five people and only four people are there, you can't go ahead because any decisions you make will not be valid if it's not a quorum, okay? Raw uh, food that isn't cooked is raw, like vegetables or meat. Raw is the sound an animal makes, like a lion, and it imitates the sound, so a lion might go roar like that. So it sounds like what it is, raw, and roaring, present participle. Saw, past tense of see. Saw, if you have um, an injury, your skin hurts, it feels sore. Uh, to saw, this spelling is what, usually a bird or a plane in the air. Saw, to saw is to sort of glide through the air and soaring and sure, sure, I'm sure of that, I'm certain, sure. Uh, tall, tall, uh, going on a tour of somewhere, as a tourist, you're touring, okay? Wall, is part of a building, wall, war, uh, conflict, warm is the temperature. Do you feel warm enough or is it very cold in here? No, I feel quite warm, that's okay. It's a sort of not hot, it's not cold, it's in between, warm and warming. Okay, we, we are warming the room. And then finally, yawn, to yawn when you're tired. You go, oh, 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 yawn. And the word also imitates what you look like when you're doing it, yaw, oh, oh. But it's yawn, yawn, and yawning, yawning. Okay, so that's the first half of the lesson and I now have some sentences for you to practice these words in combination. Okay, so let's have a look at some sentences. Um, they're a bit strange, but they're designed to give you some practice in using 
several words together which uh, are pronounced with the or sound. So or keeps coming up. So first one, all the lawyers. So those two words have or in them. All the lawyers. Okay. And then the second one, pour the port. Okay. Pour the port. So you could put those two together and it would make sense. All the lawyers pour the port. Okay. Good. And then next one. Four bald boars. So that's three in that sentence. Four bald without hair. Boars, boring people. Four bald boars. Okay. Then next one. The tourists are yawning. The tourists are yawning. Okay. Next one. The dawn is in the morning. The dawn is in the morning. Right. Next one. That's an awful flaw. That's an awful flaw, meaning a fault, something wrong with something. Right. Next one, a tall wall. A tall wall. Right. The north of Norfolk. The north of Norfolk is on the coast. Norfolk has a coast and the sea above it. So the north of Norfolk. Okay. His jaw is sore. Maybe he's been talking a lot like me. So his jaw is sore. It's hurting. Mine isn't, not yet anyway. His jaw is sore. Okay. And then finally, I normally call to make sure. Normally call to make sure. Maybe if, if I phone for a friend to check that she's in before I visit her. I normally call to make sure that she's in. Otherwise, if I go and she's not in, I, I've wasted my time. So I normally call to make sure. OK, so I hope that's been a useful lesson on uh, pronunciation. And uh, do go to the website, ingvid.com, where there's a quiz to test you on this. And if you found the lesson useful, uh, do subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.